Okay, so what if? Um, this series was honestly um, better than what most people give it credit for. Um, the, ser the season finale was um, actually really good, but, but I also have some problems with it. Um, let's just get right into it. Um, I'm going to start doing things a little differently um, from now on whenever I talk about these, uh, these things in, in videos. Um, um, so normally what I do is I go over the entire plot and then I give my thoughts on everything that happened. But I think from now on, instead what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to um, talk about, um, I'm just going to give my thoughts straight out without going over the entire plot again. Um, so to, in order to make these videos a little bit more condensed and, and quicker and easier to watch for everybody. Um, if I'm doing a live discussion, I might still go over the entire plot um, just to talk about things at greater length. But um, for videos, um, if I do videos, um, then I'm just going to give my thoughts uh, outright. So, um, the season finale of What If. Um, basically, um, uh, in the previous episode, the Watcher wasn't able to defeat, um, let's just call him Infinity Ultron since it's Ultron with the Infinity Stones. Um, and so, um, in this episode, he recruits, um, the, the Doctor Strange, um, from when <laughs> he, he, he destroyed his own universe trying to bring his love back to life, uh, Captain Carter, uh, Star-Lord T'Challa, Party Thor, and Killmonger Black Panther, and a Gamora variant who apparently killed Thanos in her own universe. Um, now, um, you're probably wondering what the deal is with that last one there. Um, so, originally there were supposed to be 10 episodes in, in the first season of What If? And, uh, the episode where, where Gamora kills Thanos, um, is basically an episode that they couldn't finish in time for release of the show. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> it is kind of awkward to, 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 to see this, uh, Gamora variant, uh, brought in out of nowhere without any proper introduction. It's definitely awkward for sure. Um, I, I, I don't know exactly how complete this episode was. All I know is that, um, it had to be cut from the season because they couldn't finish it in time. But, um, given how there were, like, a couple of weeks in between, um, this final episode of What If and, um, the release of The Eternals, I think, you know, they could have stood to give the animation team more time to finish it or, or whatever it was that they you know, weren't able to finish it in time for, you know, whatever the case may be, I really wish they could have finished this episode, you know, I, I feel like they could have afforded to delay the show by at least a couple of weeks, you know, in order to give them enough time to, in order to finish it. So, uh, it looks like um, this episode where, um, you know, Gamora kills Thanos is going to be in season two instead, which will be super awkward seeing as how it might not have anything to do with um, with the story of What If Season 2, uh, given how it was meant for Season 1. And I'm pretty sure what this means is that they're going to cut an episode from Season 2 uh, because of the fact that they're including this Season 1 episode in it, which I really hope that they don't do, but chances are that that's most likely what they're going to do, you know? So, uh, anyway, um, so the Watcher recruits all of these people that we've seen, um, from all of the different universes that we've seen um, over the course of the show. And he forms a team, calls them the Guardians of the Multiverse. Um, they meet at a bar and they make a plan to defeat Thanos by using a uh, Infinity Stone Crusher designed by um, the Thanos Killer Gamora, as I call her. Now, there's a scene... Um, <laughs> Here I, here I am going over the plot of the episode, um, even though I said I wouldn't do that. But, see, it's very hard for me to, uh, you know, to talk about things, uh, you know, without giving context. You know what I mean? But, yeah, um, basically they just, um, so they go to a universe with no life in it to, to, to formulate a plot. And Doctor Strange, you know, gives everybody a protection spell. Um, and, um, eventually, um, Ultron finds them because of Party Thor, and, uh, Doctor Strange, uh, opens up a portal of zombies from the zombie universe to distract Ultron while they escape, uh, back to, uh, Infinity Ultron's, uh, home universe, um, and 
basically from this point out, uh, the rest of the episode is just a huge fight scene. Um, <clears throat> Black Widow uh, from Infinity Ultron's universe uh, meets Captain Carter during the fight. And uh, because Captain Carter is good friends with Natasha in Captain Carter's universe, um, she manages to befriend uh, Natasha in this universe. And of course, you know, she helps them fight um, Infinity Ultron. Um, now, you know, the whole thing about, about this fight, and uh, I, I, I will say that the, the fight here is amazing, although um, <laughs> I, I do find that the, the premise behind it kind of a little bit silly, you know, because, um, so, <laughs> the guard... <laughs> The Watcher um, forms the, the Guardians of the Multiverse, you know, to, to fight against an opponent who has all of the Infinity Stones. Um, but most of these people don't really have any powers of their own, you know. Doctor Strange and um, Party Thor are really the only ones that, that, that have any sort of powers, really. So it, it feels kind of silly that... Um, the Watcher would formulate this team to take on this multi-universal threat, and, and most of them don't even have superpowers. Like, um, why didn't he bring in Captain Marvel from Party Thor's universe? Or Iron Man from Gamora's universe? Or, you know, um, in fact, why didn't he bring in Spider-Man from the zombie universe? You know what I mean? Like, like, there, there's so many other characters that he could have brought along, um, <clears throat> that... You know, like, he didn't need to bring just uh, the protagonists of their respective universes. You know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, it, it seems like a, a weird decision. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's kind of the same problem that was with the original Suicide Squad, you know? Uh, it was it was a team meant to take on um, a Superman-level threat, but um, most of the team... Um, was people who didn't have any kind of powers at all. And it's the same sort of deal here, you know? The Watcher formulated the Guardians of the Multiverse to fight against Infinity Ultron. Most of these characters don't have any powers, so, you know, what are they going to do against an opponent with all the Infinity Stones? Nothing, really. You know, they're, they're kind of powerless against them. And, and In fact, um, at one point in the fight, Infinity Ultron realizes that he needs to kill Doctor Strange in order to kill the rest of the group. Um, he catches on to the fact that Strange has a protection spell on them. And, you know, if it wasn't for that spell, chances are, you know, they all would have been killed very easily by Infinity Ultron, you know, given the amount of power that he has. Um, so, you know, as the fight goes on, you know, they manage to um, get a hold of the Soul Stone and it becomes a whole fight of, you know, keep the stone away from... Infinity Ultron, and, um, you know, eventually they manage to, um, use the Infinity Stone Crusher on Infinity Ultron, um, but it ends up not working because, um, hold on a sec. Excuse me. But it ends up not working because the, the Infinity Stone Crusher was designed to to destroy the Infinity Stones in Gamora's universe, not these Infinity Stones. And this actually, um, it, so this uh, actually is partially addressing uh, an issue that, that many people had with the Infinity Stones, uh, um, you know, how they worked and what if. Because in Marvel Comics, the Infinity Stones can't work outside of the universe where they're from. And uh, Loki establishes this. Um, by um, having him find a whole drawer of Infinity Stones, and they didn't work in the TVA. So, um, how was it exactly that Ultron was able to use the Infinity Stones outside of his own universe is a big question that was raised in the previous episode of What If. Well, the, one of the writers for the show explained um, that although Ultron can use the Infinity Stones on himself to power himself, he cannot use them to affect um, other universes when he's not in his own universe. So, uh, that kind of makes sense, but it's also, you know, sort of a loophole. Like, you know, why can't he, you know, use the Infinity Stones to power himself in a way that allows him to, um, you know, affect the universe? Like, like he wouldn't be able to, like, like snap his fingers like Thanos and, and wipe out half the life in the universe, but, um, he could still make himself, you know, 
effectively powerful enough to do that on his own, you know, without it, you know, like, like being magic or something, you know what I mean? So, um, <laughs> it's kind of a silly loophole, but, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that, that makes enough sense that I'm, I'm willing to accept that explanation. Um, but, but yeah, um, <laughs> so, um, you know, eventually, um, what ends up happening, uh, during the fight is that, um, the, the USB arrow that, that contains the, the AI of Arnim Zola, uh, get, gets shot into Infinity Ultron's eye, and Arnim Zola's AI takes over, uh, Ultron's, allowing him to take control of Ultron's body, and we finally get to see an Arnim Zola with a head or face in his torso, just like in the comics, so finally a, a somewhat semi-accurate, comic-accurate, um, Arnim Zola in the MCU, even if it's just for a small amount of time, you know, so that, that's great, and also, um, uh, you know, just the fact that we, we got a fight w with uh, an opponent uh, who has all of the Infinity Stones, it was honestly something that we were kind of robbed of in Infinity War and Endgame, uh, because of the fact that, um, by the time Thanos does get all the Infinity Stones, um, the movie's basically over like we never actually see him fight with all the infinity stones just most of them you know so it, it was really cool to, to to see uh a fight against um an opponent with all the infinity stones even if it wasn't thanos exactly um or you know the avengers exactly you know now um this is uh so so the ending here is uh kind of a big thing um when when they defeat ultron um killmonger actually uh, takes the infinity stones for himself and he gives a speech um basically telling them that we can use the stones to fix our worlds you know and um i, I <laughs> knowing killmonger i i, I feel like this was a, a setup for another betrayal like um He's just saying this just to get them on their side so that way they'll go along with whatever it is that he wants to do. Because um, I'm pretty sure, you know, like like he basically got what he wanted in his universe. So what exactly does he need to fix, you know, in his universe according to him? You know what I mean? So it's it seems uh, more like uh, he wanted to uh, do whatever he wanted with, with, with the stones, but you know, was willing to, to give them a chance to let them live by not having them fight back against them. But of course, you know, T'Challa says, you know, don't, you know, he tries to convince him not to use the stones, which of course, you know, Killmonger reacts poorly to. Um, and I actually like the exchange uh, between them in this scene. Um, uh, <laughs> so after Killmonger gives his speech, uh, T'Challa says, put down the stones cousin or, 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 or something like that. And, and Killmonger says, I'm not your cousin. And that is, is a great way to show how much of a difference there is, uh, between Killmonger and T'Challa. Oh, excuse me. Kill Killmonger says, I'm not your cousin, uh, because, um, T'Challa from this universe, he, he's from another universe. So that's why he says, I'm not your cousin. But Chachala still calls Killmonger cousin, despite the fact that he's from another universe. So he still sees him as family, uh, even though he's from another universe, but Killmonger doesn't. And also, keep in mind, in his universe, Killmonger killed um, T'Challa. So it's not like it matters whether or not if he considers him family. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh boy. So, um... <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was... Uh, that's a very great, uh, interesting scene, uh, showing the difference uh, in, in, in the character and whatnot. And, um, uh, what basically ha ends up happening is, um, Killmonger and, and Arnim Zola Ultron, <laughs> uh, tr try to fight for control over the stones. And Doctor Strange, uh, basically traps them in this pocket dimension, realizing that, um, the only way to stop them, uh, they were never meant to get the stones. They were just supposed to, uh, take the stones away from Ultron, so he traps them inside of a pocket dimension, and the Watcher basically tells Strange, you know, you're basically resigned to your fate to watch over them forever in case they break out of their pocket dimension someday, um, so, <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, Strange is basically a, a, a prisoner now, um, so to speak. And um, after that, um, the um, the Watcher se sends everybody back to their home universe, um, except for um, Natasha from Infinity Ultron's universe, um, because basically all life in her universe has been wiped out, so there's nothing left for her to go back to. Um, and, uh, they have this little exchange, um, about, you know, Natasha saying, like, you, you don't care about us, we're just stories to you, and, and the Watcher's like, I care about all of you, and, 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 you know, something like that, and, uh, I, I feel like this is a sort of, a meta exchange, like, kind of, like, leaning on the fourth wall, you know, like, like, the Watcher is meant to be, uh, <laughs> like, like, Natasha is talking to the audience, and the watcher represents the audience in this conversation, you know. So <laughs> that that's just you know the way I sort of in interpreted uh, that conversation right there. Uh, but what ends up happening is um, instead of going back to her own universe, the watcher sends Natasha to the universe where all of the Avengers were killed. Um, so she helps out uh, fight. Cap she helps Captain America and Captain Marvel fight off Loki's army uh, during his invasion and. Um, Nick Fury uh, acknowledges that this is a Natasha from another universe. Like, he picks up immediately on the fact that, um, you know, I mean, what else, what other conclusion is there to come to other than that she's from another universe, given how he knows that Natasha and his universe died, you know? And then the post credit scene, or, or mid credit scene, th there is no post credit scene for, for the finale of uh, the first season, anyway. Um, the mid credit scene just shows Captain Carter back in her home universe, uh, and Natasha finds the, the, the Hydra Stomper suit, um, from, of course, Captain Carter's, uh, uh first episode, and, um, apparently there, there, there's somebody inside. Uh, honestly, this was, a kind of a underwhelming, uh, mid credit scene, like, like, <laughs> are, are they implying that that Steve is still in there? Like, like he's just been inside the the, <laughs> the Hydra Stomper suit all this time. Like, uh, I'm I'm not really sure um, <laughs> what what they mean to imply with um, that there's somebody inside because uh, kind of hard to believe that that still that that Steve would would still be inside that thing after all this time. Like, like he never left the suit or something. Yeah, I don't know, but um, I think it would have been way cooler if um, because I mentioned this before um, in, in in the comics, the reason why um, the the Infinity Stones don't work in other universes is because the Living Tribunal made it that way after the events of the original Infinity Gauntlet storyline. Um, so I think um, it would have been really cool to have a post credit scene, you know, with the Living Tribunal uh. Basically, the Watcher goes to the Living Tribunal, makes the case for why the Infinity Stones shouldn't be allowed to work outside of their own universes, and then um, the Living Tribunal, you know, agrees with the Watcher and says, no more Infinity Stones outside of their own universes. You know, so, you know, it's, it's a little disappointing that, that what I had in mind um, didn't play out, but at the same time, I'm not going to knock the entire series uh, because of it. I understand that they have their own vision for what they want to do with the series, and um, it might not have been a good idea to introduce the Living Tribunal at, at the end of, of a, what is effectively an, an anthology series, even if it has its own overarching narrative plot. You know, so um, you know, the 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 mid the post the mid credit scene was kind of underwhelming, but but not you know the worst thing in the world, you know. Like I said, I'm not going to knock the series just for not doing what I personally uh, wanted, you know, out of it. Although, um, to, to go back uh, to the fight um, with Infinity Ultron real quick. Excuse me. Um, how little um, Killmonger was utilized in the fight uh, kind of highlights the problem that I mentioned earlier about how a group of heroes who don't really have powers of their own, you know, like, like again... Thor and Doctor Strange were the only ones in that group who, who really had powers, you know, so there wasn't really much of anything that the rest of the team could do against Infinity Ultron, and the fact that Killmonger did so little in that fight highlights that, like, when <laughs> he, he went to, to, to get the Infinity Stones, it, 
I basically said to myself, oh, hey, Killmonger, I forgot you were here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I and I know that they that Doctor Strange, you know, used a portal to bring in uh, the zombies from the zombie universe to distract Ultron. And there was a brief scene uh, where, where a zombie Scarlet Witch um, fought uh, Infinity Ultron, but she was easily defeated by him because, of course, he has the Infinity Stones. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I still feel like, you know, at the very least, you know, Spider-Man from that universe could have been brought in to be part of the team. You know what I mean? And and again, there's a whole bunch of other characters um, from, the, from the universes where they were brought in uh, who could have also participated in the fight. But I guess for whatever reason, you know, the Watcher saw something in only the protagonist of their respective universes that he just felt that he had to bring only them to, to fight against Infinity Ultron. But yeah, um, overall, I thought this series was, was um, very good. Um, Certainly, some episodes were better than others, um, but for, for the most part, the series um, did some things well consistently um, in every episode. Um, every episode has, has its own flaws, um, and every episode um, is also um, c kind of flawed uh, in, in the same ways consistently, like... Um, like I think this is a complaint that's a little over um, overplayed, but um, basically, um, there ha there were a couple of times in, in some episodes where I felt like um, they included humor in, in areas where they didn't need to, you know, like it felt forced. Um, but at the same time, it wasn't that big of a deal. Like it was only in in a, in a couple of scenes in a couple of episodes, you know, so it wasn't really that consistent of a problem across the series. Um, some people have said that um, the animation in some parts, you know, wasn't that good. But um, honestly, um, like, it, I can't think of any scenes where, where the, the animation is really as, as, as bad as people say. Like, it might not be as good as it could be, but certainly never outright bad. Um <laughs> And then, of course, you have people who, who, who think that, you know, just because the series is animated, that it's automatically worthless and it's for children and you shouldn't bother with it at all just because it's animated, which is like, okay, you know, if that's how you feel about the series, then we, we basically don't even have to listen to anything you have to say about it because there is absolutely no basis uh, in the idea that, that just because it's animation that it's automatically worthless and or for children, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, overall, I, I would say that um, even if you, you think that, that, that what if, you know, is it, kind of mixed in terms of quality, in my opinion, it does more right than, than, than wrong and is more consistently good than bad. Um, and certainly the, the good outweighs the bad and, and whatnot. Um, and, uh, yeah, th there's actually, um, th th despite the fact that, that you know, it wasn't really an anthology series because it did sort of have an overarching plot. You know, there, there's still room for continuation of the universes that we saw um, in the series. And I actually am looking forward to seeing, you know, what they do should they decide to continue um, any of these universes as their own thing. We already know that they're making a Marvel Zombies series um, because that was announced recently. And, um... <laughs> My God, uh, of all of all the things that they introduced in What If that they could have announced, this is one of the, <laughs> this is the thing that they announced. <laughs> I mean, I'm still gonna watch it, of course, but um, still, you know, z zombies, you know, are overplayed, have been overplayed, <laughs> you know. I, I was fine with the What If episode of Marvel Zombies, but. I don't really see how they could make an entire series of, of that interesting, despite the way that, that the, the What If Marvel Zombies episode ended. Um, you know, that, that definitely piqued my interest, but again, I don't know how you can make an entire series um, out of that, you know. We'll see what happens. But, um, 
Definitely, uh, out of all the things that were announced recently, <laughs> the Marvel Zombies series was is the thing that I'm looking forward to the least. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that that's pretty much all I have to say about What If. Um, thought it was good. Um, some episodes were better than others, but overall, good series that's definitely overhated. Most of the complaints are about people not getting specifically what they want rather than, you know, judging the show on its own merits and whatnot. And uh, <laughs> in particular, I see a lot of people complaining about things not being consistent with, you know, how things played out in, in the main Marvel universe, which goes against the entire idea of the series of the show. Like, it's literally about um, alternate universes. You, you can't say, you know, oh, this is a plot hole because in the main universe this happened. Like, like it's another universe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's supposed to be different. <laughs> <sighs> but, yeah. <laughs> that That's pretty much all I have to say about that. Um, thank you all for watching. I'm sorry I didn't do this live like I promised, but um, hopefully um, you, well, you'll see me live again uh, soon, and uh, we'll, we'll talk more uh, about this kind of stuff um when, when i do live streams again so uh thank you all for watching um i hope you enjoyed uh <laughs> listening to me talk about what if and such and uh yeah i'll, I'll see you to see you tomorrow i guess